video and we will be covering something called Laravel doctrine today. Now we've had a brief look about around Laravel the last time or last couple of videos I can't remember and today we will be looking at something called or partly it is something called doctrine. Now what doctrine is it's an alternative way of accessing your database so Laravel ships with something called eloquent which is an example of the active record pattern whereas doctrine is an example of the repository pattern. Now the big difference between the two is that the active active record pattern combines the model with the database logic whereas the repository pattern splits the two. So, and the two big advantages of splitting them one is because you're keeping your database logic outside of your model whenever you create a new copy of a model or a representation of a database entry as a model is that it takes up less memory which and if you're doing stuff like analytics is a big thing because it makes it a lot less resource intensive the other reason for this it makes things like writing tests a lot simpler because if we have a look at this repository here so this repository is the part of doctrine which talks to a database and it's got this entity over here which is the model which um, as a copy or as a representation of the fields in the database. So these properties in the user relate to fields in the database and the way that we tell Doctrine how to is by this part over here. So this tells it's an ID, it's a generated field by the database, it's a column of type integer and it's got a name of ID. And these, one have a type, and these two, the name and the email, are of type string. Okay, so back to the user repository. So when we want to do testing, going back to that, is that we can create alternate versions of this entity manager interface. So this is an interface that provi is provided by Doctrine. And if we want to, for instance, say, let's say we want to simulate a successful entry into the database. So we want to say that what happens when we write a unit test and we successfully save the user then we can create a version of this entity manager interface that simulates the success. If we want to, let's say, for instance, test what happens if we fail to create a user in the database, we can create a copy of this entity manager interface, which then fails when we try to create a user. Does that make sense? So let's see. On to how we set all of this stuff up, right? So. I've already created myself a database in the background before I made this video in Postgres called Laravel app. I've already updated my ENV file as well on how to do that. So if we have a quick look, so that PGSQL is for Postgres. That's the port for Postgres, a default one. That's a database name and username and password. If we go back to a composer file, I want to sh we need to install this Laravel Doctrine ORM. We need to install this Laravel Doctrine extensions and this get my doctrine extension so we install this extension these two extension parts for something that's called time stampable which we'll get to in a second also what we need to do is we need to publish the config for doctrine and we're going to have a quick look at the documentation for what that is and while that is loading i will quickly show you something about time stampable so if I'm talking a bit quickly is because there's a quite a few things that we need to cover and I've tried to make previous recordings and we ended up going over time. So let's have a look at the setup for Laravel 5. So let's see for extensions. Yes, go back to users. Okay, so we've got this time stampable trait which we get from those two ex extensions that are installed. And this that extension, the stampable stamp stamp <laughs> Lara. Time stampable trait gives us created that and updated that. So, what this time stampable trait then does, it sort of gives us the exact same functionality that Eloquent would have given us out of the box when we deal with created that and updated that. Because without this sort of trait, is that, for instance, when you try to save this user in the user repository, it fails saving because the created that and updated that fields aren't populated so let's have a quick look at the installation so if, um, you'll see 
um, and their web page is they still using 1.3 whereas currently what we need if we're using Laravel 5.6 is we need 1.4 not 1.3 so hopefully they'll update the website soon so then what we need to do is in this config app what we need to do over here is if we go to configs as we need to go to config app and then we need to add Laravel in there so you see also I'll have a chat about that one in a little bit the other thing that we can do is under the aliases we can add new aliases or and then take out that one brilliant and then what we also need to do is we need to publish a config file which I've already done before so I'm gonna have a chat with you about the config file in a very little bit and okay we're at the end of that so let's have a look at the config file so okay well we're already there so let's see so I've made a change in my config file I've enabled this extension for timestampable pretty much and yeah that's pretty much it but let's have a quick look at the top so you'll see here for the connection for the DB connection it uses the same sort of things that you would that eloquent would use so you don't have to change anything about that so it's got this path which is the app entities so that's it tells it that the user models all of your models are actually in this entities in there but for the moment we only have user it got it's got these proxies which it hasn't created yet so let's see if it has maybe okay so it hasn't created any proxies but it auto generates these proxies so in production i think the idea is in production everything works a little bit faster let's see if it's got this entity repository so you can take this in this default entity repository and you can extend it and um, do something else with it like if you need something in additional stuff um but i think i haven't changed this extension there and yeah i think that's about it for this file okay so let's have a quick chat about getting the authentication going so if you go back to this user one of the things you'll see that i did is i've it implements this authenticatable trait. Now this one is stock standard sort of Laravel. And what this does is this says that this user implements a bunch of functions that Laravel needs to be able to treat this model as something that we can log in with. And you'll see it also uses this authenticatable trait, which actually comes from Laravel doctrine over there. So this is something that Laravel doctrine provides for us to be able to make some sort of model that we have be authenticatable within the Laravel system. And it's got all these other functions or methods that Laravel would need for you to be able to log in. So to let's see. Okay, so we got this auth. So we're in the auth of PHP file, config file now. So as part of setting up Doctrine, we get this driver, Doctrine driver, and then we and that then replaces sort of the standard Laravel one for authentication. We have to give it a model that we're authenticating with, which in our case is just a user model and the app entities, the one you just saw. Those things stay the same, if you remember. And then at the bottom here is for the password reset is that we also use the Laravel, oh sorry, not the Laravel, the Doctrine driver for passwords down there. Now, one of the other things that you need to do to be able to get the Laravel going is you need to do something like this PSP make auth to publish all the routes for Laravel for authentication, which I've already done before. So that gives you, let's see, under resources, views, auth, that gives you all of these, all of these files, just login, register, reset, and email. And these controllers, they come out of the box with Laravel you don't need to do anything for those and the only one that we actually had to change out of all of these is the register controller to be able to create the user using Doctrine instead of Eloquent so you'll see what I did is I replaced the functionality within create with this this user repository which we have up there as well so we just use Laravel's IOE system to give us a user repository there we save a local copy with it for this controller and then all we do is we call this create function that persists the user now if you use 
doctrine before is that, or if you look at, let's say, let's just go back to the home page for this. So I'll show you something quickly. Okay, I'm gonna load quickly, don't have much time for this video. So you'll see there's a flush down here, right? But we are not gonna use that flush because what I did as part of all of this is that under HTTP, I wrote middleware for this. So the middleware begins a transaction at the beginning of the middleware. It runs either the next next piece of middleware or the controller. It commits any database changes. It flushes them to the database. It returns the result of this controller or middleware. And if there's an error, it simply rolls back. Now, Laravel doesn't always nice play nicely with this doctrine. So I'm going to show an example of that, right? So if we do something like this ID meter helper, it's not working at all. And to be able to do debug this, I really think I need something called xdebug running on my local machine. And that would be this topic of our next video. So guys, thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you liked it, really give me a like. If you want to see the next video, please subscribe. And I well, thank you so much. And I really hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. Bye-bye.